players. Yeah. Great talker, great speaker. I wouldn't hold it against you if you love to go hear him. <laughs> um, before we get started, if you look at your schedule, it lists me as talking on. Clicker. There we go. Just that. Um, a couple of years ago, there was a bit of controversy when a little change set got put through in WordPress.org with a little function called capital P Dang It. This was set to resolve an issue where people constantly were mistyping WordPress with a lowercase p. I've been considering adding something into Jetpack that does lowercase p Dang It, because uh, it's actually Jetpack. Um, very small thing. About half people do it. You've been warned. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Joseph Bonas. I am a code monkey on the Jetpack Fit Group. I get to spend all my day doing fun stuff for automatic, building uh, there we go. Uh, building Jetpack. I never advanced with my talent to it, that's my demo. Um, and I get to build fun stuff for four. So uh, I'm also a lead press and carpentry nerd. So when I'm not on my computer, I'm a bit of a Luddite, but eh, it works for me. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is a little bit of explanation for how I'm going to have some things as we go forward. Uh, normally, if you want to test something, you'll wind up doing something like, uh, okay, make a new file called test.php, add the code you want to see in it, save it, close it, and then run it. What I'm going to use here just as a shorthand notation, and because I use it in my own personal workflow, is a wonderful thing called WPCLI. All that you saw me do over there on the left side of the screen can be distilled down into uh, that one line. Uh, WPCLI does a lot of awesome stuff. You can do like WP plugins, activate plugin and they'll talk about on and off, update, anything you need to can be managed through the command line. Uh, this is just a shorthand way of saying load up WordPress and then do what I tell you. So, um, moving on from that, uh, the first thing we're we'll talking about is stats. And I normally hear a lot of questions about, okay, WordPress.com offers stats, bundle with Jetpack, awesome. Why would I use that instead of Google Analytics or any of the other different stats and limitations that are out there? Um, I wouldn't say use it instead of, i say use it in addition to, because they have a lot of different takes on things. Uh, which includes things like uh, we have queries you can make from your code base against your stats data. Uh, this results in some things like you can get your stats dashboard right in WordPress.com admin. When you're on the front end of your site, you can see activity charts for your site saying how much traffic you've got. This makes it much easier to spot traffic spikes. You can easily catch uh, when you've just released a post or something and you're getting a lot more uh, hits because that one suddenly went viral. You get a lot of really useful data on this. But I'm talking right now about what you can do with the data once you've got it. Uh, if you pull up that URL, uh, the csv.php, it will uh, present you with a lot of marketing paths to it. I'm just going to be using a few. Please look at it afterwards uh, to get an actual idea of everything that it does present. Uh, so, uh, Jetpack will handle the authentication for you. Uh, and if you pass in something like this, uh, just get the views, you'll get something like this back. You don't have to worry about parsing any CSVs, it's just there's your data and you can start playing around with it. There are a lot of things you can do to play around with it. Um, so I'm gonna say post views, period, week, days, 12. Days in this is actually a little bit of a misnomer. Days actually tells you how many of the interval you want to look at. So uh, this opens up some really cool things we can do. Uh, we can pull in data for the most popular posts in the past few days by passing in post views and show me the past two days worth up to 20. What are my 20 most popular posts? Uh, display the uh, traffic on the edit post stream. So when I go to edit a post, I can see a history graph of how popular that post I'm editing has been. Uh, it up just like that. Well, post views based off the post ID and like a weekly chart. Uh, and then where's your traffic coming from? Uh, pull up data on your referrals uh, based on days, week, month, how many, how far back do you want to go? Do you want to see where your traffic is coming from, from the 
just the last 24 hours, do it. If you want to see where it's been over the last six months, you can do that too. You can do a lot of really slick dashboard widgets to give your clients more and deeper understanding of where the traffic is coming from and much more integrated into their site administration. Uh, so it's basically giving them much more solid, stable, complete package as soon as they log in. Uh, like I said, there's tons more that you can do with this. This is just barely scratching the surface. Um, I was saying WPCLI earlier because when you want to test how functions work and what data you're getting back from them, it's a lot quicker than uh, running through creating a bunch of test files and constantly saving, running, saving, running. This just gives you a much easier uh, user interface for it. Um, moving on, uh, there's a little message I have to anyone that makes themes or client sites or commercial themes, and that's Dear theme developers, please stop adding custom contact form short codes and modules to your themes. You're hurting your customers. And there's all sorts of plugins that do it. We do it. Uh, contact Form 7, there's Gravity Form, there's Formidable Pro, and dozens more. By adding the custom stuff to your theme itself, you're not planning in your exit strategy. Your customers may not thank you for using, for being, for playing nice with plugins, but they will be cursing your name when they would rather do a different plugin that gives them more richer functionality. Uh, theme Parts has started implementing, like Matt was saying in the last talk, uh, Theme Parts has started doing some terrific um, new plugin guide or theme guidelines that are saying, hey guys, be aware of the larger ecosystem. Someone eventually is going to want to change from using your theme to someone else's theme. When they do, you don't want what was a beautiful contact form to suddenly just appear as a short code and then they start cursing your name because you weren't thinking in the more in the larger scale for what's going to happen down the road. Love me. Uh, next up is a lovely thing that does not get auto activated with Jetpack ever, uh, but a lot of people use it called Photon. Uh, basically, it's an image CDN, completely free. Um, your server will be faster, your hosting company will be happier, and you'll be more attractive well, to your clients anyway. What it does is on output, so this doesn't affect anything in your database, but as it's getting ready to kick your content to the front end, we run through, parse anything we can catch with filters that we're aware of, uh, and swap it out to a CDN URL. It's free, uh, and unless you're doing something really tricky that it's not going to work on, it's worth giving a shot. Um, when you're running a image heavy website, like if you're hosting a webcomic or a photography gallery, uh, if your server has to spend a lot of time shooting out like a two megabyte image again and again and again to many different servers, that's a lot of server clock time that's being eaten up that could easily be dedicated more towards uh, delivering your content faster and getting uh, quicker page load times. So if you can outsource your images to a CDN, ours or anyone else's, uh, it's going to significantly increase your server response time, decrease the bandwidth that's going through your server that you have to pay for, and make everything just a little bit happier. I like that, we're not dealing with your content, but what if you're doing a plugin or a theme and you're hosting assets there or you're pulling something in through uh, API or you're paying Twitter and you want to host your, pull down your images through Twitter? Um, things being pulled through an API don't necessarily pass through the same filters that we need to replace them. Uh, so if you're calling URL by filters, Jetpack code by URL, this is a safe way of doing it because even if they don't have Jetpack installed or active, uh, you'll just pass the URL through, no harm, no foul, and you'll get exactly what you started with. But if they do have Jetpack, they do have Photon enabled, this is going to suddenly speed up the site because the image is going to get cached onto the remote servers, and there's far less work for your site to actually run through and do. Uh, there's a lot of documentation on a lot of extra filters you can pass to it. You can see the third argument of passing to apply filters uh, has some options in it. In this case, uh, resizing it to 400 pixels wide and making it grayscale. There's a ton of others that you can do. 
Um, they don't normally get seen that often, but they're available. Uh, and a real world example, uh, I was talking to a friend of mine months ago. Uh, he runs an old theme that's been around for years called Comic Press. Um, if you're ever thinking about doing a webcomic, don't use it. Uh, there's a new plugin called Comic Easel that does basically the same thing, except it's in a plugin, not a theme. Uh, and Comic Press was doing this a long time, years before custom websites were around. So it's using old ways due to legacy reasons that you shouldn't be using anymore, but it is what it is. Uh, and there's a lot of folks that don't want to invest the time or the money to update their theme. They just want to keep uploading their comics day after day uh, and just having them display properly. The problem is their hosting companies don't like them because the images just keep getting pulled and there's a lot of extra server resources like I was talking about. So by doing something like this, we can put into the filter that outputs the comic, uh, parse it, find the images, pass it through, and just serve a cloud uh, hosted version of it. Uh, I have seen uh, response times dramatically improve. I've seen server loads drop like a stone uh, as soon as this goes in. Um, but again, this is all running through filters, so if something is quirky, if something is not running exactly as it should, it's really easy to revert. So it's always simple to just add on, take off, add to me, to there's no danger, no risk. Uh, and the last bit that I'm going to be talking about right now is OmniSearch. Uh, OmniSearch has been a pet project of mine for a while. Uh, about six months ago, I got frustrated that there wasn't any good way to uh, just like search for all your content in WordPress admin. So in an afternoon, I picked out the first prototype, got a couple weeks polishing it, and then we released it in Jetpack 2.3, I think it was, in the module called OmniSearch. What it is, uh, is by default, it's got to search your posts, your pages, your comments, your media fields, and if you have the Jetpack comment form active, it'll search your uh, responses to your comment form as well. Um, it'll search available plugins, if you have the capability to install plugins, if not, you won't clutter up your UI with it, uh, and anything else that a plugin might want to offer results for. So, if you're running an e-commerce plugin, the e-commerce plugin could potentially hook into the filter and offer their results. So if I'm studying for, or if I'm searching for uh, widgets, I can see my post on widgets, a comment someone made about the widget, I can see a product I have for the widget, I can see orders where someone may have bought the widget, all from the same search field. Uh, is built to make your life easier, and it's only in the WordPress app. This is not going to affect the front end of your site at all. This is just a dashboard page that helps folks that are already on the admin find their content. Um, and it is probably coming to core in 3.8. Um, there's been discussion, it's probably gonna be dropping the OmniSearch moniker. Uh, it'll just be search. So if you happen to see a new search box show up in your admin bar on the top right side, when they're on the admin side of your site, uh, give it a shot. Uh, there's currently a lot of discussion going on about it in make.wordpress.com slash core uh, about different things we'd like to change, tweak, and get it ready to actually go in. Uh, so it's so like a search, this is what you see, and then you can jump around to the different results sections you may need to. Um, that is basically what I've got. Um, I'm stopping a little bit early because there's normally a ton of questions, both on is there a good way to do this? Why are you guys doing that? Why can't I use the contact form if I haven't yet connected to WordPress.com? Um, all sorts of different stuff. So I'm gonna open the floor now. Um, if you don't have questions, I can probably find something to ramble on to, but there's normally a bunch of folks who want to give me grief. So, uh, go ahead. I'm just wondering if you have uh, this PowerPoint for us to find on the internet or yeah. on the computer? Uh, I'm going to have it on my site, uh, and I'm going to tweet it out through my Twitter handle. I'm going to have it out shortly after the talk's done. I'm going to have to do the TDF and get that. Yeah. Or, uh, my site is. Sorry, what's your site? Uh, my site is stephanis.info, S T E P H A N I S, dot, like Stephanie with an S. Uh, and like I said, there's my Twitter handle. I'll send out a link to it shortly after the talk. Yes. Are there traffic limits to the CDN? No. It's free and do what you want. Uh, I've had people that are 
expressed concern in the past saying, oh, but what if you go and uh, start charging it for it down the road? We're not going to. Uh, we're profitable, we have enough stuff going on in other areas that we can afford to build awesome things and just release them for free. Yeah. Hi, uh, if a site is hosted on VIP, is it automatically using Photon, or is that still something that needs to be set up in the theme? Um, that should be, it depends how the images are getting loaded. If an image is a content image and it's being kicked out by one of WordPress's native functions, uh, we already have folders in place that are gonna cache that and CD it. And really, all uh, assets are getting loaded normally by a CDN when you're on .com. So when you see, like, uh, if my blog was georgestefanus.wordpress.com, all assets are loaded via the georgestefanus.files.wordpress.com, which is a cookie-free subdomain that CDNizes it all around the world as need be. Um, if something isn't, like if you happen to be doing some fun stuff where you are dynamically pulling things out from an API, um, you should be able to use the same uh, filter. If it doesn't, let me know and I'll commit it because I may have forgotten to initially. So, yeah. yeah. Can you talk a little bit about uh, using Jetpack on multi-site networks, in particular larger multi-site networks, and not, you know, are there any plans to be able to network activate without having to connect every blog individually? Uh, sure. Um, that's actually something that we're in an active sprint to do. Uh, we should have a beta coming out for Jetpack 2.6 probably very early next week. Uh, and that's something that one of the other guys on the team, is named Ben Lobaugh, he's out of Seattle, uh, has been actively working on. Um, he's hoping to have a good, solid addition, I think midway through next week he was saying, we should be able to make it in under the wire for the next release, which will probably be in the next couple of weeks. Um, what we're looking at is hoping to have a way, so um, we've been adding some things, uh, like uh, migrating away from filters and more towards custom permissions and capabilities. Uh, so there is currently a Jetpack can disconnect uh, capability, I think it is, uh, that um, you can deactivate for anyone who's not super admin. So if you connect all your subsites, uh, you can then set it so even if someone's a site admin, uh, but not super admin, they can't disconnect it and then try to reconnect it on a different profile. Uh, this was actually done because someone pointed out to me that that would be useful for like the WordCamp.org sites because individual WordCamp administrators are still supposed to have their sites connected to the master account um, and not just connected to 50 different WordCamp administrators' personal accounts. Um, so that's something that we actually are working on and should probably be in the next couple of weeks. Great. Um, anything we miss, uh, please drop me a line personally uh, and I'll make sure we do get looked at. I mean, if there's future requests that you'd like or things that would be convenient that I've not mentioned, um, please, we'd love feedback from users. It makes our lives easier. Uh, back in the stripes? Oh. Oh. Sorry, over there with the mic, man. <laughs> um, for the Photon CDN, sure. is that your own offering, or are you backed by a third-party CDN? Um, I believe we run it through Akamai. Um, it's, we have a bunch of different data centers around the world that serve the data up. So if you're over in the EU, you're going to get a local data center. It's going to come a lot quicker than if your server happens to be sitting in Florida or something. Is there, we had a WordPress.com site that we flipped over to a self-hosted.org site. Is there any way of going back to the .com site now that all the data has been moved out and finding out what our first three months of statistics were? Yes, uh, if you shoot your request at jetpack.me slash contact dash support, I think it is. Yeah, right, sure. <laughs> you put that on board someplace? I don't the URL. But uh, if you just go to jetpack.me, click contact support, um, or shoot me a tweet afterwards, I'll find you the link. Uh, but all you have to do is contact support, and there's a way that they can merge your stats from your old Jetpack site, or from your old .com site into your uh, Jetpack site. So you can see exactly how your traffic has changed over time. 
That would be really wonderful because now all we have is Google Analytics. Well, I guess I could use Jetpack on the, on the self-hosted site, but the only uniform statistics we have are through Facebook, and we'd really like the, the real stuff. Yeah, thank you. Uh, are you currently using the Jetpack stats module? Um, actually not. I, I haven't enabled Jetpack because I don't know why. I'm here to find out why I didn't sure. do it. One of the main goals we've had with Jetpack is to provide a large degree of feature parity between .com and self-hosted sites. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of custom short codes and widgets that we have on .com that aren't uh, stock WordPress core. Um, I mean, we're glad if anyone wants to roll them into core, and we've offered them a couple times, but a lot of the stuff is more dependent on APIs that we can offer that uh, core can't really use because it's uh, raw open source software and can't be dependent on an external server. Um, so a lot of the stuff uh, is there so when you export your content from a .com site, if you're using like a, a YouTube shortcode or some other shortcode that we have, uh, then your content on your .org site will get pulled across cleanly. So you're not showing a like an old short code when you import your content. The person who did it did a really fine job, so we got along okay with that. Is there a calendar in Jetpack? Uh, I believe so. If not, let me know and I'll just pull it across. Okay. Um, you mean the one that just pulls in a Google Calendar? Well, that's a, we want to put a calendar on our Dart org okay. site now in ways that we didn't know we wanted to when we got started. And so I'm looking for really good calendar software that is easily integrated by the likes of me. Sure, I mean, there are a lot of plugins for .org sites that will do that. Uh, there's, I, I yeah, but if it's in Jetpack, I get a whole lot of other stuff all at the same time. Right, but uh, it depends because the one we use on .com basically will pull in a event feed from Google Calendar. Okay. Uh, but if it's something you wanted to manage the events as a custom post type in WordPress. I want it to be as simple as possible. Okay, yeah. Uh, let me know if it's not there and I'll add it in. Beautiful, thank you. Sure. Uh, you, you were just touching on this, but I was just curious, what is the process by which you guys determine what goes into Jetpack and what just stays on .com, and what's the real process of the flow there? You know, I mean, the big thing that, personally, I kind of dislike about Jetpack is it's got like 30 modules inside of it, and what determines whether or not those are going in and how that works? Um, a lot of it is, if we think of it, uh, if someone happens to message us and say, hey, here's this short code or a thing you have on .com that's really useful, uh, why can't I use that on my .org site? If someone asks, we'll say, okay, cool, let's pull it across. Uh, if it's something simple and trivial like a short code or a widget, we'll tie it into those modules and just make it instantly available. Uh, if it's something more complicated, like uh, uh, the widget visibility module we just pulled in, uh, that's something that we're going to uh, probably have some model that can be activated or deactivated because that will significantly overcomplicate the UI. Um, but it also is really powerful and there's a lot of demand for it. So there's a lot of different ways that can be done. Um, one of Matt's stated goals for Jetpack long term is he wants WordPress.com to eventually just be uh, a core WordPress install that has Jetpack activated on it. So we're really aiming to bring as much feature parity as we can between them. And then in the end, it's just going to be whether you want to be able to run custom code in addition to Jetpack, or if you just want what we're already offering. Uh, anyone else? Okay, um, just two other things that, while I'm here, uh, common questions that haven't come up. Uh, if you ever do need to run Jetpack, uh, and you can't, and it's like on a local server, there's a wonderful constant you can define called jetpack underscore dev underscore debug. If you define that in your WP config file, uh, jetpack will just deactivate all the modules that need to connect to .com uh, and make the other ones available without connecting uh, because when connecting jetpack to .com, it needs to be a two-way sync. Uh, so if .com can't ping your jetpack site back, uh, then it can't connect, so just even do local development, uh, that gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, and the other thing is that if you, by default, as we upgrade, if a module is uh, 
safe to do, uh, and it's not going to affect the front end of your site unless you manually flip some switches and activate it. We will probably go through and auto activate that new module. Um, there's a lot of modules that we don't auto activate, but if you don't like that we're auto activating new modules, there's a one line filter you can add. Uh, just add filter, jetpack, get default modules, or turn empty array. One line solves it. Um, it's just something that we found people normally enjoy and it makes the UI a little better. So, um, if there's no other questions, yeah. Uh, on yeah. Did you just um, tell that other woman that you would add uh, the WordPress.com's calendar module to the next Jetpack release, or did I misunderstand you? Uh, I'm going to look at adding it. Uh, there could be a reason it's not been added. I don't think there is. Uh -huh. but, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. I mean, if anyone ever needs like a filter added, or if there's something that we have on .com that we don't have in Jetpack, it could just easily be an oversight. So message us, ask us. We love feature requests. So. I think I'd let us know what you want it to be. Yeah. Uh, hold on, wait for the mic. <laughs> Could you just repeat the uh, command in the WP config for local? Oh, command? sure. Uh, it's. anywhere near big enough to actually read, but uh, it's jetpack dev debug, uh, and then that just puts it into a compatibility mode. Uh, so no new modules are never going to be auto-activated, and uh, it will never ask for an So you can use stuff like the custom CSS module for the contact forms, and it won't think about the other stuff. There's a plugin in there repository right now called Slim Jetpack that they've done a, basically it lags a couple weeks behind releases of Jetpack but they've done some modifying of the code in it so it doesn't ask to connect to .com uh, I really don't know why they don't just reduce the entire plugin to one line that just uh, puts into a filter and turns it off so you just run it alongside your Jetpack install It'd be a lot simpler and folks would have a lot quicker releases but their plugin, not mine. So, yeah. Anyone else before we call it? Okay. Uh, I'm going to be down in the happiness bar for a while. If anyone has any individual questions or configuration things, feel free to ping me. I'd be glad to help any way I can. Thanks.